Hello and welcome to Flames Pyrography for Beginners and Beyond. We've got another couple of minutes before we start. We're going to be looking at doing a French Bulldog project together. I'm going to start the tutorial series off on TikTok. And there'll be a lot of it going on to YouTube as a project that we're going to do looking at more realism than you know just doing a average burn will obviously take us a bit longer to do I'm just trying to Sort this out, that's it. Let me just turn the volume, make sure the volume's up from this. It is. So I've got this French Bulldog picture off Pixabay, which you can get free images that you can download. And you get pretty good quality images. Now when you print your image off it won't be the greatest quality image that you could use to create your pyrography artwork with but all you can use it for is a template to set your eyes your ears your nose and any other little features that you feel can help you as you build your project so we do not use like, the photograph for the uh, reference picture. I've got that on a digital display so I can see a lot more detail. I've transferred over the image onto a piece of birch ply. I've got my extra small space shader. And we're going to start off with looking at the eyes of the Frenchie. When you do pyrography projects, you always start off with the eyes. As that's what sets your piece off. So, we shall make a start. We've got a graphite lines in. Now, the type of pyrography I teach is to burn low and slow. It's not blasting with high heats. We're working at around two on the gauge. Let me just get it exactly at two. So with this pen too, it's quite hot. So remember we're looking to capture realism with our artwork. And with a dog's eye, you will always see right in the corner where the, like say the iris is, is always... A really dark area so we could put that in straight away we'll be moving the board quite a bit through this exercise but we can mark in that corner piece and then I can see on my reference photo, there is a piece of white that stripes along the eye. 
and then we get into the main eye itself. So I'll go ahead and I'll go over that graphite line. And this then sets in that little white piece of eye. Up above, you've always got yourself, obviously, the lid. And all these graphite lines we will rub out as we move along the piece. And this session we'll be looking mainly at the eyes and I need to move that light. I've sanded this birch ply up to 2000 grit paper and it isn't helping me at the moment because it's like a piece of glass. <laughs> So on this side there is like a sort of highlight but it's not a full highlight but there is one there that we do need to take into account so that will just be a slightly lighter shade as we go. So first of all, I would start filling in the iris of this dog. I just need a light that can... Let me see if I can turn this light off. Hopefully you'll still be able to see, because I couldn't see that light yet. I can still see. Okay, happy days. First of all, work along the inside edge using the tip of the pen. Work on marking your inside edge of the eye. Because this is all black, as you'd see on the reference picture, I'll just show you quickly. It's just set black and there is a bit of colouring to the eye. But the rest of it around here, this area is black. And that's what's going to help us give, give us a bit more shape to the eye as it progresses. We're doing dog's eyes is a skill in itself where it can take you several hours. Well, you will revisit the eye probably many times throughout the whole project. But the eyes can take hours to set them right, to move your board when needed to, to get at the right angle. Because when we're doing dark, like sort of inserts in the eye as we are, we need to come at it from the right <laughs> I don't know what that was all about, eBay. So always turn your board around. And mark the corner of your eye in. 
right, so we're burning low and slow here we're not we're not blasting at it with high heat and ideally I could knock this down a touch because to get depth in a piece of art you need to keep working the wood and you'll slowly start pushing things down bringing things higher up and creating more detail if anybody does have any questions at any point I will try and keep my eye on my other screen But I'd always suggest when you download your images off Pixabay or Unsplash, which are all royalty free and they're good quality images, save it to your tablet or your, even your, your laptop, or whatever, because the digital image will be far better quality than the printout. The printout is a lot of rubbish to work from. You couldn't create a portrait from a printout it just doesn't show you all the detail so at this stage all we're doing is layering the corners this is a, a black area But we need to have different tones to the black. And obviously in the corner will be the darkest shade. And then as the eye rolls out, it'll become a little lighter. As it comes to the front of the eye. You're going to see me move this board quite a bit. Always under the lid as well. We've got this eyelid here. Always under the lid. If you think about it. The, air, the, the area of the eye under the eyelid there's going to be no light getting there is there so that's going to be one of the darkest spots again of the eye And go ahead and push that back. We'll be going deeper with the eyelid. That's it. My original markings. Obviously it weren't bang on because you don't see all the detail that you do on the digital image. But you can make your corrections as you go with your pyrography pens. I always use a spare shader for creating the eyes. Using you can use the tip and you just get so much more control with if you try 
doing this with the ball tip it just wouldn't get the same sort of shape and control that you have with a spear shader you can mark in the beginning to the pupil so when I'm on this angle get a sanded this board so well just getting a glare of light remember to, to create like really realistic looking eyes it's not going to be done in half an hour so you know you have to slowly build your way there that's why I like to use the burn low and slow method because you then you start you can create the depth that you want gradually rather than just woof, there his eye going off up there but there's this bit of highlighting that we need to take into account As I did say at the outset of doing this class I wasn't going to rush it like previous weeks I was going to do it as if I was doing a commission for somebody Have a look love uh, wood burning dogs the all the well especially a Frenchie with all the wrinkles and everything they are a real uh, good challenge there's easier dogs to do than a Frenchie definitely but this should be a cool project if you can follow it through with me You can see with the heat I'm putting in, very light to begin with. As you're getting a feel for the shape of the eye, you want to start off. Since when did you start drawing a Frenchie again? <laughs> I just decided, babe, to. I saw it on. Pixabay and I was going to do one on the dog's eye and then I thought the eyes weren't really enough so I thought we'd do the whole project and it's been a while since I would burnt a dog let's see if uh, my skills have improved any since the last one I did. Okay, so then we know we've got this white area that we won't be touching. It is a part of the eye. Some dogs have like a white a bit on their eye, don't they? Some don't. 
whereas this is still a part of the eye as well. So this would be the bit we'll set darker. Right, so we don't get there all just at once. Got to think about the shadowing of the lid that will come into play. You see a lot of dog portraits and the ones that really stand out are the ones that have an amazing set of eyes. As my wife always says, the, white, the eyes are the window to the soul and they're the bit you're drawn to first with any portrait, aren't you? As soon as you look at a portrait or something, oof, you look at the eyes well, if the eyes are sparkling and look back at you really well then you've got a good quality piece if the eyes look flat and lifeless then it's not as special No, I'm still just working on the outside areas of the eye. I'm going to do a dark line in under the eyelid. My stomach's growling. So we've got the black part of the eye coming round now. Work it out from both sides. It'll make sense as we go because what we're trying to do is create a more oval shape so working top to bottom top bottom top bottom and then building some like sort of depth and shape to it If you blow the picture up bigger than what I did, you'd be able to use a medium spear shader on this. But because I've shrunk it onto a pretty much an A5 size board, we need a smaller pen. Excuse me. And just start letting some of that heat seep into this area. So just gradually start lowering the tip of your pen and just letting some of the excess start to seep in. Oh, 
anything that's followed this lead. So we can keep that point of reference in. Dog's going out for a week. When you're trying to create any portrait with realism. You want to look at all the little minute details. I mean, what I always say is the first, maybe day or so, maybe even longer, is familiarizing yourself with the piece of art. You know, as you keep looking back into over the reference picture, you're building a mental image in your mind. Of how the actual dog looks. And I'm always searching for more depth and, you know, more realism. That is, that's it. That is the ultimate goal, isn't it, for all artists? Remember the first French AI tutorial I did? It was over four parts. I can imagine it quite long, but it is the best way of doing dog's eyes. So if anybody does have any questions, Shout them up as to what equipment to buy or where to get images from. Graphite paper, how to make your own piece of graphite transfer paper so you're not spending a fortune with, I don't know, online art suppliers who keep Supplying you with this graphite paper. You can make your own piece in under an hour That will last you for over a year Right in the corner of the eye Is the darkest project like this would usually if I got really obsessed with it by maybe around two weeks solid wood burning you know of like three four five hour sittings because there's a lot of fur to be built up when you're creating a dog portrait. Still working top to bottom. I'm 
to capture along that eyelid right inside it with Frenchies they have a weird eyelid they have it almost looks look